Hello, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is about cruciferous veggies. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Katie and Beth, and today we have a special guest, Oriel, joining us as well. Uh, so let's get started, and Katie, tell us about your recipe. Okay, I will. Um, it's pretty simple. I made a loaded broccoli casserole. I knew I was going to use broccoli for this category. It's like one of my favorite foods ever, so I was excited to make this. I thought it sounded really simple and easy. Um, the recipe is from eatingwell.com. For the first time I made this, um, well, it calls for a 9 by 13 inch um, baking dish, and it barely even filled up half of the dish. You can see my original picture, so I was pretty disappointed, so I've modified the recipe considerably, but it was so good the first time I made it, I was like, okay, I can fix this. So I did. Um, so what you do is you just preheat your oven, you coat your baking dish with cooking spray, and you cook up some bacon just in a skillet um, until that's done. And when the bacon's done, you remove it to a pan, but leave the drippings. And then you add your broccoli. So I ended up using three pounds of broccoli for this. So it was quite a bit, um, but it filled up a large skillet. So it worked out fine. But the thing is that um, the bacon fat didn't completely coat the, all of the broccoli, which is what you're looking for. So you can add some oil. So I just added a little bit of olive oil, um, get that all coated. And then you roast your uh, broccoli in the oven for about 30 minutes. Uh, stir it a couple of times in between. That gets nice and tender. And then while that's cooking, you mix up some shredded sharp cheddar cheese sour cream and some scallions mix that all together when your broccoli is done pour that all in and mix it around i added chicken the second time i made this so that was something that i thought was kind of nice and optional if you want something a little bit heartier but you definitely don't have to add chicken i just threw in some um cooked shredded chicken um and then make sure everything's all nice and coated and then you cover the whole thing with some more shredded cheddar cheese and your bacon that you cooked earlier. Pop that in the oven. And when it's done, like it just needs the cheese just needs to melt. So at that point, it's like five minutes. And when that's done, you just sprinkle the scallions on top, some more of those, and you're all set. That was your loaded broccoli casserole. It's really good. I've got a picture of my completed one once I uh, modified and fixed it, but it's very comforty food. Yeah, sounds delicious. Um, I have not, I, I like forget to make those like cheesy broccoli casseroles. And every time someone makes one or I see one, I'm like, oh, those are so delicious. So did you just pre-cook the chicken and throw it in? Is that what you did? Yeah, I did. <clears throat> just very simple, baked it, salt, pepper. And then I shredded it. You could cube it. Okay, cool. You could use any kind of chicken. I mean, it's very versatile for sure. Yeah, sounds really good. I mean, cheese, sour cream. You could stop there, but throw in some broccoli <laughs> and I'm all over it. Right, and bacon no less. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. definitely better with bacon too. Yeah. All right, Oriol, tell us about your recipe, please. Yeah. Um, so my recipe, and I, I'm sorry, y'all, this is kind of roundabout. My recipe doubles as a plug for uh, lacto-fermentation. I'm like an avid lacto-fermenter. Uh, and I think that cruciferous greens are one of the best things to ferment. I think that they they benefit so much more than, I don't know, some, some other ones. Um, and there's so much of cruciferous vegetables also that is fibrous or like hard to eat in its sort of like given form like uh kohlrabi uh the stem of like most of them right and then also like the ribs on your leafier greens like collards or mustard greens 
So this recipe was, um, it's, it's one that you can make without doing the home ferment. Uh, there are solutions for it, but uh, I had some fermented mustard greens from last summer. Um, so we cooked up, I just made like some cold soba noodles. Um, and uh, you, can, you can also buy, sorry y'all, this is so roundabout. I'm not very organized clearly, but you can buy uh, pickled mustard or fermented mustard green in pouches at like a good Asian grocer. And so I've had this recipe with that before and it's also fantastic. But um, what I did, and I'll show you a little bit, my fermentation setup uses a vacuum sealer. So I know single use plastic, cancel me, but um, this makes it really, really easy. This is just some purple cabbage that I have going. Um, so, yeah, you just, uh, and, and fermentation is really simple too. You take your vegetables, you weigh them, you throw them into a container with 2% salt by weight. Um, also add salt for your brine if you're using a brine and then just let it go until you're happy with it. So I've used it here. I've used it with kohlrabi. I've used it with collard green ribs. Um, but yeah, I guess to dive into the recipe, thank you all for your patience. Um, I went a little bit extra here. So I got some mushrooms. Um, I used lion's mane, but you can also use like any kind of mushroom, um, portobellos, shiitakes, king oysters would work. If it's something feathery uh, and like wispy or wispable, uh, like maitakes or lion's mane, then I would say tear it into little wisps. But if not, you know, a mince is fine. And then I let it go low and slow with some good salt to draw the water out and then let it get some color on it. Um, once the mushrooms were done, I cooked some tofu, extra firm tofu in both cubes and crumbles, I like a little bit of textural variation there. I put a pretty hard sear on them and then seasoned with a little bit of soy sauce and rice vinegar just to get some flavor going, a little splishy splash, but not too, too much because most of the flavor is going to come from the mustard greens and then also a good amount of chili crisp at the end. Um, I garnished with some scallions and just some quick sauteed bok choy, but both of those things I think are totally optional. And then the noodles come out just a little bit dry at the end. I wanted to use sesame oil, but I didn't realize that I didn't have any. So I just put a little bit more of soy sauce and rice fin on top and uh, it was delicious. It was quite a bit of chili crisp that I used, pretty fiery. And then invariably the toppings, cause they're kind of small, they like sink to the bottom as you're eating. So at the end, I had a little bit like, like some very flavorful bites, but not enough noodles to balance it. So I would say maybe leave some noodles in the pot. Don't put them all in the bowl. But yeah, it was great. It sounds delicious. Yeah, yeah. It sounds of super course. good. Um, yeah. Every component you named, I was like, yep, yep, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yum. But how long you said let let for the uh fermentation like mm -hmm. for greens like kohlrabi for example how yeah. long would you need to ferment that to taste something so it depends based on a couple of factors one is the ambient temperature of the fermentation space and then the other one is how much existing microbial activity you have going on so some people uh, will do what they call back slopping, which is where you take some brine from a previous ferment that's already rich and active and probiotic, seal that in or you know jar it up with whatever you're fermenting and that will sort of kickstart the process. So without back slopping, I've had things take, I don't know, maybe like as many as three weeks for sauerkraut, but mm -hmm. then with back slopping, it can take as little as one week. Um, okay. And with kohlrabi, actually, one thing that I've done is set it to start fermenting like a week and a half before I have a camping trip. And then because there's so much salt in there and it's already sealed up, there's no need for any refrigeration. And once we're ready for like a nice salad, you just slash it open and fun little kohlrabi slaw. That is so cool. Yeah. I've that never is... fermented anything before so like new goal for the summer's garden like that yeah. like it could be really fun so thank you for bringing that that's really neat Absolutely. it's super yeah. easy it's just salt and time um yeah. and i hope that this is more empowering than um intimidating 
Very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to jump in because Oreo provided me with some uh, fermented blueberries. Uh, for doing him a favor one time. Didn't have to pay me, but anyway. Um, and I've so yeah, I've got these fermented blueberries and I, I still have them in my freezer, so I need to use them up. And uh, we can talk about that later. But um, yeah. I but what I did was I put them in brownies a couple different times. The second time was with um, my grandkids came over and Olivia kept spitting out the blueberries. And when my when I I thought they had just a nice pop of salty blueberry, but anyway, let's that go on. To, really good. Yeah, it's that sounds it was awesome. Good. They were yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Really good brownies. Yeah. Thank you. I think I used it with meatloaf one time. It was kind of weird, but <laughs> well, this, I also used broccoli for cheesy baked broccoli fritters. I got this recipe from Naj Najee Mayashi. She is the same uh, chef that I used the, the recipe for the smoked salmon or for the cured salmon. Turns out we had a recipe or a cookbook of her these fritters are just so stupid simple and tasty they're just um uh about five cups of broccoli you know cut up and then steamed let it let it uh dry out and then mince them up and it includes oil eggs and seasonings that uh but then the other thing is it's two cups of cooked rice that have been cooled and two cups of shredded cheddar. You also use a green onion and a half cup of panko. So um, you once you, you just mix it all up and scoop it into to balls, you know, into, and then bake it on three fifty, I think it was, for thirty five minutes. And and I think you flip them. Yeah, you cook flip. And then they were super good. They were just cheesy. The, and even though they looked like they were going to fall apart and they were falling apart, and I do have some pictures too, um, they they help, they hold together because the rice keeps them together and the cheese. And then she also uh, has a bunch of different sauces that she indicates, says that will go with it. Not a bunch, but one's ketchup or plain yogurt. She also, um, the first time I made it, I seasoned up yogurt with a little garlic and lemon and salt the, but she has this instant spicy pink sauce which is just sour cream or plain yogurt and sriracha or at home I use franks and another one she uses is sadiki saziki which I included um but yeah when you if you have some leftover rice or even if you just want to make it um, it was just really good. And my, this is something the grandkids really liked. And Henry kept going, mo dat. And he just kept pointing mo dat. <laughs> so, um, that was a winner. Sounds delicious. I have leftover rice right now. So I'm, I'll be waiting for your recipe so that I can make this. That sounds really good. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Did they see. get, um, at all like crispy in the oven yeah. bag? Okay. Yeah, they get crispy. Oh, and then she also says for leftovers, you should bake them for eight minutes, but I, we used, put them in the microwave and they were just fine. They were okay. Cool. Just, so yeah, they, they do well for as leftovers. Nice. But yeah. So Elizabeth, what did you make with your cruciferous campaign? <laughs> so I eat cruciferous veggies literally all the time. And I actually ended up struggling with this a little bit just because it was I'm constantly eating them, but I don't often, like a lot of the time I'm just baking, like, you know, roasting some broccoli or roasting some Brussels sprouts, or I'm like tossing kale into a pasta and all that. So I didn't really, I don't feel like all the time I'm really like necessarily making recipes, you know? So I was trying to figure out what to do and I ended up keeping it really simple and this was good. Um, but I used Brussels sprouts and um, basically so first thing you do is you just make some pickled, some quick pickled onion. So half a small red onion, salt and pepper, and in, in, and then throw it into some vinegar and just set it aside. And then um, you just call for a pound of Italian sausage, 
casings removed if needed and you just cook that in a skillet until it's brown crispy whatever and then you take the sausage out but leave the fat behind and then basically you have um a pound and a half of brussels sprouts that are just you know trimmed and cut in half you throw that into the skillet with the so the fat left over from the sausage and you kind of let them get browned um, so you're supposed to just let it sit and that worked well. And then, you know, once they're browned on one side, move them around to um, get, get, get cooked the rest of the way. And then you put the sausage back into the skillet, stir everything up as needed. And then you basically take it off, put it in a bowl or on a plate, um, add salt and pepper if you need to, top with the pickled red onion. And then this was kind of interesting it called for, it's, like, this didn't quite make sense to me, but it called for Italian parsley added that's like chopped just, I guess, for that kind of like brightness. Um, so I did that because I was following the recipe, but I didn't feel like it was necessary actually. And I don't know that I would do that again because the pickled onion really did give a nice flavor diversity. So the parsley felt a little unnecessary, but it was really good and easy. It was a nice side dish. I thought it would be a good side dish for like a holiday fall table if desired. Um, obviously not vegetarian with the sausage, but um, yeah, it was really good. And honestly, if I were to make this again, I think I would turn it into kind of a full meal by like scooping it over rice or scooping it over um some kind of grain or like polenta or something um so it was good it was easy it kind of jazzed up the brussels sprouts a little bit which i usually just toss with olive oil and roast in the oven so i liked it nothing nothing wild but it was it was simple and good and 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 uh, definitely you could you know make it into a whole meal or it would be a nice a nice side so yeah that's what i did sounds fantastic sounds like it would go crazy on some risotto <laughs> yes, Ooh, that yeah. would be awesome. Sounds delicious. Very nice. Yeah. So anyway. Um, okay. Well, I will say thanks, especially to Oreo for joining us today. It was wonderful to have you as a guest. And Absolutely. I'm excited to chat with you more about fermentation because that's always been something I'm interested in, but haven't quite delved into. So um that's anyway. Cool. I will I will take us out by saying thanks to our audience for watching Recipe Share and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org so you can find the recipes we talked about and feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time on Recipe Share when we will be having a coffee cake off. So thanks for watching and thanks for sharing. Recipe Share, Recipe Share. Share a little recipe with recipe, share.